Cryptocurrencies. Some love them, others hate them. Nevertheless, they're investments and it's fundamental to keep track of them. This crypto tracker uses your transactions to automatically summarize your current portfolio performance. As you can see, it includes multiple details on the crypto holdings such as market cap, circulating supply, and market rank. These insights are taken directly from a website called CoinMarketCap, so they will always show real-time statistics. The tracker formulas have the capability to track your crypto transfers from one platform to another, as well as fiat purchases. These features monitor scenarios that naturally represent the reality in this space. Let's go through a quick example. Let's say we bought Bitcoin using Gemini's platform, but we transferred the Bitcoin to Celsius to earn some interest. All we do is enter a transaction where we send the Bitcoin from Gemini, and another transaction where we deposit the crypto into Celsius. Finally, let's say that at the end of the month, we received some interest from Celsius, so we simply enter another transaction disclosing what we earned. As you can see, the platform holdings are now displaying the updated Bitcoin amount in the Celsius platform, and they are no longer in Gemini. All done through a sequence of intuitive transactions. Maybe you noticed, but in the example we bought Bitcoin using Canadian dollars, while previous investments were purchased in US dollars and Tether. Nothing to worry about. All values are converted to your currency of choice for accuracy and consistency purposes. Finally, these dynamic charts on the top show insights and help visualize the crypto portfolio and performance. And that is it, we've entered our transactions and the rest of the tracker fully automates the final results. If you would like to skip the tutorial and access this ready to use tracker in light, dark and cyberpunk theme, make sure to visit my Patreon, which is linked in the description of this video. Now let's learn how to build this crypto tracker from the beginning. Okay, so we're going to go to Google and search Google Sheets, and we're gonna select this link. Go to Google Sheets, and we're gonna start a blank new spreadsheet. We're gonna start off with the Transactions tab, and we're going to enter the following titles for each of the columns. So feel free to pause the video and copy all of these in the correct cells. Okay, so here's where we're going to enter our transactions from column A, all the way to column J. First, I'm gonna add some data validation so that's easier to enter transactions. So we're gonna select cell C3 and then press Command or Control, then Shift, and then the down arrow. So we select all the rows. We're gonna go to Data, Data Validation, and we're going to select Date. So now when you click any cell in the Date column, it shows your calendar so you can choose any date. I'm also going to change the format to this one here. It's easier to read. Now for the asset class, we're going to select all the rows again. Go to data, data validation, select list of items, and we're going to enter just three items, cash, comma, crypto, comma, fiat. Click save. So as you can see, all the cells now have some arrows. If we click the arrow, it shows us a drop down of all the options that we entered. So then you can just select whichever you want. We're going to do the same for action. So we're going to select all the rows, go to data, data validation, list of items, and we're going to enter the following. And again, we get a drop down of all the options that we just entered. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter the transactions that I showed in the demo so that we get the results where we're working with the formulas. And this one should be cash deposit without the comma. Okay, yeah, so feel free to enter these transactions just like I entered them if you want to see the results that I get when I enter all the formulas. But if you want, you could also enter just a few transactions at the beginning just so that we get at least some numbers. It doesn't have to be exactly this, but that's up to you. So we're going to enter the following formula in the total column. All the formulas that I'm going to be using in this tracker are available to access for free in the description of this video. So just scroll down and open the formula sheet that I'll provide. So we enter that, what we're going to do is copy it, so command or control C, go to the left, press command or control and then the bottom arrow, so we go all the way to the last row, then we're going to go to the right and now we're going to press command and shift or control shift and then the up arrow, so we go all the way to the top and finally we just press control or command and then enter, so we drag down all the formulas with our keyboard. Depending on the transaction sequence and due to the complexity of these sheets, the average cost might be inaccurate. The important value to look at is the rolling cost that we're going to work on, which is used to calculate the performance in the rest of the tracker. 
We're gonna leave these two columns empty at the moment because we're gonna require the dashboard values to enter the formulas in here. So at the moment, we're gonna leave it as it is. And once we complete the dashboard, we'll come back to this to finish it up. So that is a transactions tab at the moment. What I'm going to do is quickly format it. So I'm just gonna merge some cells, add some colors and borders, and then some conditional formatting. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back and as you can see, the, I've added some colors to everything. I'm just gonna quickly show you the type of conditional formatting that I did. So if you go to format, conditional formatting, you can see that I entered the following format rules for each of the asset classes. So I select text is exactly cash. So you fill the background with this color and make the text this color. Same with crypto and fiat. Finally, there's a fourth formula that I added and this one is a custom formula. So what this formula is saying is that if cell A3 is not empty, then format it with this style. So as you can see, A3 is currently not empty. So then all these rows, they are formatted with a style that we chose. That's why in the range, I chose from A3 to J. So I'll just give you a quick example. The whole row is going to be colored in the style that we chose. It's just a good way to keep track of your transactions and where you're up to. I did the same formatting for the actions. I just did it for crypto send and deposit. The other ones, I just left them as black. And finally, for the brokerage fees column that says that the value is greater than zero, then color it red. That way we can see clearly which transactions have brokerage fees. So what we're going to do now is enter a new tab and we're going to call it the dashboard. So first we need to work on all the controls of the sheet and we're going to do this on the right. So what you're going to do is just select a few columns and then right click and insert a few more. So we're going to go to column W and we're going to go to row 22. So now in row 23, we're going to enter the following titles for each of the columns. Make sure you're entering all the information in these specific cells because the rest of the formulas that I'm sharing are going to be capturing the information from these precise cells. So it's just very effective for you to enter the values exactly where I enter them. Okay, so let's start with the asset. So we're going to enter this formula. It's a combination of unique and filter. So all it does, it looks at our transactions that are crypto and fiat, and we get a list of the unique values. For the asset name, we're just going to link it to cell D24 at the moment because in cell D24 is where we're going to be entering manually the names of the assets. The moment's going to be empty, but then later we'll just enter a few so that we get the asset names. We currently have 1000 rows. I don't think people are going to be buying 1000 different cryptos. So I'm just going to go to row 101, select them all and then delete them. For quantity, we're going to enter this massive formula, but it's not that complicated if you think about it. It's pretty much several sum ifs formula that just scan our transactions and give us the quantity based on the filters that we added. So for example, this first one is scanning our transactions for buy orders that say crypto and match Bitcoin USD. And we just follow that sequence to understand what is the current quantity that we have per asset. In the hypothetical transactions that we entered, the quantity for Dogecoin is sold all because if we go to transactions, you can see that we bought all these coins and then we sold all the coins. So therefore there are no coins left and we just get a message that says sold all. Okay, and to get the current price, we're going to have to do it from the CoinMarketCap website. Because currently, if you enter Google Finance, you can get the price for Bitcoin, Ethereum and Litecoin, I think. So if you do currency, Bitcoin, USD, you get the current price. But then when you do it for coins such as Dogecoin or USDT or Cardano, Ripple, Google Finance won't retrieve this data. So we're going to go to CoinMarketCap and get these prices from here. The first thing that we need to do is enter a few parameters. So we're going to go to column W, row 3. And now what we're going to get from CoinMarketCap is the list of X paths. So I'm going to show you how I do it with current price. So we go to CoinMarketCap and just select any coin that you want. I'm going to go with Bitcoin. So we want to get this piece of information here from this website and we're going to be using import XML. So for import XML, we need the URL of the website and then the X path. To get the X path, you right click the value that you want and you select inspect. Now, as you can see, this is the information that you want. So you right click that, go to copy and then copy X path. So now we just paste that X path here, just like that. And then for the current price formula, we enter import XML, the website with currencies slash, and then we select the asset name. So it's currently blank, 
But if I enter here Bitcoin, we will get the current price of Bitcoin. Like I said, we're going to be entering it from column D. So at the moment, I'm going to leave it empty. But to know which asset name to enter, when you go to coin market cap, you should check the URL. So it currently says currency slash Bitcoin. So this is the name that you should enter Bitcoin. Looks like we're getting obviously blanks and a few zeros because we haven't entered the asset names. So what I'm going to do is go to column D and just enter the asset names. So as you can see, now we get the current price for all of them, as well as the value. One thing to note is that the current price that we retrieve from coin market cap is always in US dollars. So it's great if you're just investing in US dollars. But in this case, we bought Bitcoin and Canadian dollars. So technically, this price is incorrect. We would want to have it in Canadian dollars or the consistent currency that we choose from. So that's why we're first creating this control portfolio table. And then once we complete this, we're going to do the same on this side with the currency converted. So try not to base yourself off this table. Always base yourself off the table that has all the currencies converted to your consistent currency. Okay, and now for market cap, circulating supply, max supply, market rank and market dominance, we still need to get all the expats. So I'm just going to quickly do that and you can copy them. They'll be in the formula sheet or you can try and do it how I found the current price. So now that we have all the expats, we can continue entering the following formulas. Okay, there it is. That's the direct crypto portfolio table. Now we can scroll back to the left and continue working with the rest of the dashboard. So we're going to start working on the table that uses the consistent currency. First, we need to enter the currency dropdown. So we're going to go to cell C20. We're going to go to data, data validation, and we're going to select a range. So we're going to go to transactions and select from B3 all the way to the bottom. So you just remove B3 to B. Click OK, save. So now when we go to the dashboard, we get a unique drop down of all the currencies that are currently in that transactions column. So I entered this title through a formula. So I did was equals quotations. I enter the title, close quotations, and then I enter the and symbol to select that cell. So whenever I change this to another currency, the title changes to match this currency. Okay, so now let's start working on each column. And now for the average cost, we're going to enter this formula that will essentially look at the currency that we currently chose. It will look at the currency that we have on the table on the right and convert it if it's necessary. And for coin market cap and the rest of them, we're just going to link them to the table that we created previously. So market cap, drag it to market dominance and we drag it to the bottom. So that is it. Now, whenever we change the currency, all the values should change to the current currency that we chose. In this case, Canadian dollars. Now we're just going to create the tables on the top that show us a few interesting statistics about our performance. So all we're doing here is just reading the values from the crypto table to understand the cost, the value. Then we use this formula to get the portfolio return. To get the top performer, we use the offset formula with max. In this case, it's Ethereum USD. It's checking out the maximum gain that we had and giving us the result of that asset. Now we want to get the total brokerage fees in Canadian dollars and we're going to do this using the transactions tab, but we want to do it from the currency converter because we're going to be changing the currency in the dashboard to many currencies. So we want to enter the following formulas here. And these formulas are very similar to the ones used in the dashboard that check the currency that we're using and convert it if we choose a different currency. So now we can get the brokerage fees in the correct currency. So as you can see that it's currently $64 in US dollars. When we change it to Canadian dollars, the value changes. And now with this formula, we get the compounded annual growth rate. I like to use this value a lot in my dashboards because you can see more or less your yearly performance. In this hypothetical portfolio, 
it says that our portfolio gain has been 67%, but in reality, say we've been trading for a couple of years, it's actually 30% per year. Finally, the last table to work on is the platform holdings. So we want to get the unique values of platforms that we're using. And then again, the unique values of the assets that we bought, but we're gonna use the transpose formula so that we get them on the same row. And now we're gonna use this formula. It's quite similar to the quantity formula that we previously used, so a combination of sums formula. But in this case, we add an extra filter, which is the platform. So all you can do now is drag. You can drag it to column S. And now we can drag all of these down to row 19. So if by any chance you use more than six platforms, you'll get an error here that says that the formula can't show you the results because there's another value. So all you need to do is pretty much add a new row so the platforms will fit in the amount of rows that you have. Similarly, you can do the same with the assets. Say you bought, I don't know, more than 20 different coins. You can keep adding columns here and then dragging the formula so all your coins fit in the formulas. And that is pretty much it for the skeleton of the sheet. I'm going to quickly format this sheet with borders and colors and conditional formatting. And then when we come back, I'm going to work on the two charts that we're going to insert in the dashboard. Okay, and here it is. I added some borders, colors, and conditional formatting. The conditional formatting for the dashboard is pretty simple. So you go to format, conditional formatting. And as you can see, I added some conditional formatting for the gain and loss. So if the value is greater than zero, we'll make it green. If not, we we'll make it red. And I added conditional formatting to the platform's holdings table. So as you can see, I selected these here from C13 to S19, B14 to B19. And the rule is that if the cell is not empty, then we format in this style. That way, whenever you add new coins or new platforms, you get the color that you want for that table. Now we're gonna add the first chart. So we're gonna go to insert, chart. We want a column chart. And for the data range that we want, I'm gonna select column L all the way to the bottom and the column C again all the way to the bottom click OK and there it is that's the performance we want the asset in the x-axis and we want the gain and loss in the series and now we're gonna insert another chart and this one's going to be a donut for the data range we're gonna select current value all the way to the bottom and again the asset for the label, we want asset, and for the value, the current value. Okay, and there it is. The crypto tracker is good to go. So I will use these formulas for a future investment portfolio tracker so we can get a similar capability, such as sending stocks, not only cryptos, from one platform to the other. Things like that. So stay tuned for the next one. This is Planet Finance. Thanks for joining me. Until next time, happy learning.